السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless him, his household, his companions, every one of us to grant us goodness up to the end. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept from us the supplications that we engage in so often, the needs that we have are so many, and it is Allah alone who listens to uh, the dua and the supplication and responds positively. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we were speaking about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam's du'as, his supplications, the Prophet Abraham. There are so many supplications. I remember in the previous episode making mention of the fact that these Prophets of Allah asked Allah more than what we ask Allah. They called out to Allah more than you and I. Look at their du'as, look at how beautiful all their supplications were. They, are, they were so loved by Allah that Allah mentioned the same words in the Qur'an. They also called out to Allah on more than one occasion for the same thing and different wordings. It's important for us to understand this. Uh, we were looking at Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for offspring. He was granted the offspring. But early on in his life, when he had asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance, he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi habli hukman wa alhiqni bis salihin. O oh Allah, grant me hukman. Now, hukman refers to a few things. In the previous episode, I had made mention of how it refers to uh, the power, the authority, but primarily it actually refers to knowledge. So, oh Allah, grant me knowledge, grant me, uh, you know, the knowledge of the book, etc. It was revelation that was due to come to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. With knowledge, you are empowered. So you have the power. Without knowledge, you're not empowered. You are actually weak because you don't know. So when you're all of these are connected. You're asking Allah for power, for authority, for knowledge, for wisdom, even prophethood. Uh, in the case of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, Allah blessed him with that a little bit later on. And Allah blessed within his offspring uh, them with the prophethood as well. So the next dua that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam made was the dua for being remembered afterwards by the people with something good. So if you've been to a city, you leave, they should speak good about you. If you have passed away, you've left the world, people talk about you, they speak good. Allah accepted this dua. What was it? Surah Al-Shu'ara. And Allah says, this man is saying, Oh Allah, let me have a remembrance of goodness upon the tongues of those who, whom I will leave behind. As a result in Salah up to this day, when we are seated in the Salah and we are about to end the Salah, we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, innaka hamidun majid. We are sending Salawat upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we are saying, Oh Allah, uh, blessings upon, send blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the same way that you blessed Ibrahim alayhi salam. Where did Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam fit in here? He was blessed by Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ensured up to this day that we too remember him with goodness on our tongues. So Allah chose to add this as per the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam to us in the salah. Amazing. He just said, Rabbi habli hukman. In fact, he, he says, uh, sidqin fil Oh Allah, uh, let me be remembered in a good way uh, by those who are to follow. Here we are. Every salah, billions of people are remembering Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam with a good remembrance. Amazing. Look at that dua. Look at how when Allah accepts something, He doesn't just give you what you've asked for. It's beyond imagination. It's beyond the imagination. You ask a, a, a multi-billionaire for one dollar and he ends up giving you 10 million. I mean, subhanAllah, for him it's nothing. It's zero. Uh, that's a normal worldly example. The example of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far higher. But let's move on to some, to more of these beautiful du'as of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in the same verses. وَجْعَلْنِي مِنْ 
ورثة جنة النعيم. Make me from among those who inherits paradise. Grant me paradise in other words. The paradise and the goodness that comes within the paradise. This shows us the importance of asking for paradise. Working towards it is one thing, seeking it is another thing. وَاغْفِرْ لِي أَبِي إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الضَّالِّينَ Oh Allah, forgive my father, for indeed he's astray. Now this was in the young age of Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was asking for forgiveness for his father. But later on, Allah taught us something through the example of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam to say, when you seek forgiveness for someone, they need to have had the remorse, felt the remorse, they need to have sought the forgiveness and have had to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they did not do that, you don't ask for them to achieve something they did not want. Simple. When a child has done something wrong at the school and the headmaster calls the parents to say, the child has been suspended, please take the child away. If the parents come to apologize, that apology will only be accepted if the child is showing remorse and acknowledging that what I did was wrong. But if the child is showing no remorse and the child is ready to do it again and again and again and he's saying to the parents, listen, I don't need you to ask for this, I don't want it. W wouldn't the parents look so foolish to actually go back to the school and say, we're apologizing on behalf of the child. On behalf of who? On behalf of a child who is not apologizing, who is not apologetic to begin with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if people don't want to worship me, why are you asking me to have mercy upon them? Why are you asking me to grant them paradise when they did not believe in paradise in the first place? Leave them alone. What will happen is between them and I. We will sort it out between ourselves. You don't need to get involved. You can only get involved when you want to ask for the mercy for someone who believed in the mercy, but they may have faltered here and there. Someone believes in Jannah, they believe in Allah, they believe that they want to worship Allah, but they were weak. You say, oh Allah, have mercy on them, forgive them. Someone who didn't even believe at all, Allah says, leave it between us. We'll sort that matter out. May Allah make it easy for every one of us and our offspring. So that was a benefit we learned from the dua Ibrahim alayhi salam made to, to have mercy on his own father when his father chose a totally different path. It's like uh, I was speaking to someone who doesn't believe in the hereafter at all. And they were saying, you know, you guys are so bad because you believe that people are going to go to heaven and hell. And I said, all religions are free to believe that a person who's good will go to heaven and a person who's not may go to hell. But you don't believe at all. So why are you worried? Why are you worried? I mean, uh, what are you worried about? If I ask Allah, I ask Allah for guidance for that person. But I don't need to say, oh Allah, give him Jannah when he doesn't even believe in Jannah. That's the explanation of this particular uh, verse and what happened later on when Ibrahim alayhi salam was actually corrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his prayer. So then he says, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبَعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ O oh Allah, do not embarrass me on the day that you resurrect the people, the day that no wealth and no children will be of benefit except for the one who has a sound heart. Wow, he's worried about the hereafter. Ibrahim alayhi salam, the friend of Allah, is asking Allah, O oh Allah, do not embarrass me the day you resurrect everyone. It's a dua I should be making, you should be making, we all should be making. We've all done things we would not like people to know about. We wouldn't like them to see. It should be between us and Allah. We say, oh Allah, لا تخزني يوم يبعثون يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم. Oh Allah, do not embarrass me on the day uh, that you resurrect the people. The day that no wealth, no children will come to benefit anyone besides he who has a perfect heart or a sound heart. May Allah grant us that sound heart. So what is a sound heart? A sound heart is actually that heart that is filled with the obedience of Allah or worshipping Allah alone and not associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
If you want a sound heart, you need to work towards it. You need to ask Allah to give that to you. You need to make sure that you understand it and you, you, uh, you ask Allah on the day of judgment to make you from among those who actually comes with a sound heart and Allah will not embarrass you. May Allah not embarrass any one of us. This was Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and he was calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this beautiful way. And there are so many other du'as of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam that he has asked for, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed uh, him with and given him. And all of us have reaped the benefit of the du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Like I said in a previous episode, even the du'a of loving the Kaaba, loving the house of Allah in Makkatul Mukarrama, it has reached every single one of us and we actually reap the benefit therefrom. Now I want to go into some of the du'as of the other messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Lut alayhi salam made a du'a to be protected from his people. And he says, Rabbi najjini wa ahli mimma ya'maloon. Oh Allah, protect me and my family. Because his family were the only ones who followed from what they're doing, the immorality that they're involved in. Look at Shu'aib alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he said, على الله توكلنا ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وأنت خير الفاتحين. Before I translate that, Shu'aib alayhi salam was sent to a nation who used to cheat people in business, shortchange the people. They wanted to make money by hook or crook. They just needed money, money, money. They worshipped the money, everything was about the money, everything was about merchandise. How they got it was besides the point. They just wanted it, hook or crook. They shortchanged, they cheated, they stole, they deceived, they did anything they could. And Allah warned them and sent them a prophet to remind them don't become greedy greed to the level that makes you do things that are wrong so here he makes a dua at a certain point he says oh Allah we lay our trust in you we lay our trust in you now it's interesting to lay your trust in Allah when we're talking about business because if everyone is doing business dealing that is very clandestine, that is actually clandestine to the degree that when you try to correct them, they might sideline you and you may not earn, you may not make money, but the provider is Allah. So you've got to keep on doing what you believe is right. And Allah will provide you. He will give you the provision. He will definitely provide for you. So he says, oh Allah, I lay my trust in you. I've got to correct these people. I'm going to say it. I, I've got to actually uh, do whatever I have to. It's, it's in your hands to provide. Oh Allah, I lay my full trust in you. And I want you to judge between us. Iftah, you know, when we say iftah, it means to open. When we're, when we're opening the reality, we're actually judging between the parties. So, iftah baynana wa bayna qawmina bil haqqi wa anta khayrul fatihin. Oh Allah, judge between us and our people with justice for you are the best judge. You are the best who's going to judge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that to him. So Allah sent the punishment to the people of Shu'aib, to the people of Lut, to the people of Nuh, to the people of the previous nations. When their prophets who were sent to them prayed against them. Until the prophet did not pray against them, there was no punishment that came to them. Because the prophet was instructed to deliver the message from Allah. They came through, they provided the message, they gave the message, they tried very hard, they carried on and on. When the persecution began, that is when the, the clock started ticking. What this means is, the people were not okay, or the people did not sit back and say, I don't want to listen to Nuh, I don't want to listen to Lut, I don't want to listen to Shu'aib, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. The people did not just sit back and say, we don't want to listen to them. They started harming them. They started attacking them. And this is why whenever you are calling towards the right path, those who don't like the message, they will not just say, leave them alone. Whoever wants to follow, let them follow. They will come and start attacking you in your person, your struggle. They will try and block you, stop you, attack you. They may even want to eradicate you because you're a thorn in the path. You know, they're doing their dealings. 
They are cheating people in business. If you keep on saying stop cheating people in business, you guys, what you're doing is wrong. Stop cheating people, stop deceiving people. Those who want to continue deceiving and cheating and they're earning out of it, you're their enemy because you are trying to convince people to become upright such that they won't like it. I give you an example. If corruption has overtaken community to the degree that the justice system is corrupt, the police is corrupt, everyone is corrupt, the ministers are corrupt, everything is corrupt. If that happens to any country, any nation, then those who are upright, their survival is at risk. The reason is when they come up to say, guys, don't do this, it's wrong. The police will attack them. The judges will judge against them. The, the ministers will be against them. The entire nation will be fighting them because they've been making their money in the wrong way. They've been into bribery. You know, you could bribe perhaps in some countries the justice system from the chief justice all the way down. Perhaps some of, in some countries it is, and we've read about it. It's such that they're all corrupt. So the upright are sitting in the prisons. And you know what? Those who are the most corrupt, who are supposed to be in the prisons, are actually the ones who are jailing everyone. It can happen. It does happen. So this was what we learned from the messengers of Allah, that things that are turned around because of you calling people towards what is upright. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of us. May He grant justice to everyone. And may He make us all from among those who are upright. They don't suffice by uh, saying, okay, this guy is saying a good message. Let me think about it. Let's all become good people. You know, nations have failed because of corruption. Totally failed. If we want to uh, see the success of our own nations, we need to first tackle corruption. From where? From the top to the bottom. We need to understand when the police are corrupt, it's over. It's over. The, you know, they say in the Arabic language, Hamiha haramiha. The people who are meant to be protecting you have become the thugs themselves. Now what do you expect? So here the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were facing this type of challenge where those who were uh, the, the corrupt, they were only being told that why don't you correct yourselves? They didn't say we don't want to correct ourselves. They said, who are you? We're going to attack you. We're going to harm you. We're going to stop you. And they tried even to eradicate these messengers in the case of so many of the messengers. That is why the messengers were forced to raise their hands to say, oh Allah, there's no one besides you. This system is completely corrupt. It's totally gone. There is no one besides you. Oh Allah, I ask you, we ask you to judge between us and our people. Open the opening, make it clear, make it manifest. Who's right, who's wrong here? These people are not going to do it. You are going to do it. And you know what? You are the best of judges. So whenever we are feeling oppressed, whenever we are feeling down, whenever we are feeling let down by a system, this is a powerful du'a to make. رَبَّنَ افْتَحْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ قَوْمِنَا بِالْحَقِّ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْفَاتِحِينَ O oh, our Rabb, O oh, our Lord, judge between us and our people with justice for indeed you are the, the greatest of all the judges. You are the most just. And this du'a was made by uh, these messengers. And you know what? After a little bit of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed sent down the punishment to those who deserved it and Allah guided whoever he wished to guide and the punishment came down in such a way that subhanallah they regretted ever having not take uh, having not taken heed uh, uh, of what those messengers were calling them towards I want to move on to a beautiful prophet of Allah the most beautiful Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam Allah speaks about him an entire surah and chapter named after him. But have you ever thought of the du'as that were made by the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam? Some strange, amazing du'as, amazing supplications that show you the difficulty that, that he went through, the hardship that he had to endure. Being a messenger, the son of a messenger, the son of a messenger, the son of the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he had so much of blessing, but... He was tested. I look at one of the first du'as that come to mind uh, and that uh, the ulama speak about when they speak of the supplications of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Joseph, may peace be upon him. قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيْهِ وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنْ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ 
Again, before I translate this dua, this supplication, it's in Surah Yusuf. Let me set the scene for you. Here are a group of women trying to seduce this man and they're calling him towards sin. And one of them is a very beautiful woman. She has authority, she has wealth, she is the wife of, of a very powerful man and secretly, privately, she's luring him towards committing the sin. And they threatened him to say, you either commit the sin and earn the displeasure of Allah in the process, meaning they were calling him towards it, knowing that this would earn the displeasure of Allah, or we are going to ensure that you will be falsely charged and you will be jailed. So the false charges were about to be put in place against him and he would be jailed as a result of these false charges. Do you know what he said? He said, Oh Allah, I would love to be jailed than to be committing a sin against you. Allahu Akbar. The curse is upon those who falsely charge others. How many times we hear of people who charge others for that which they didn't even do. So if that is the case, it is definitely a major curse. And we learn from the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam that he chose something that was much more difficult. He was imprisoned for a long time as a result of a false charge that was laid against him by someone. If we were in his place, one wonders what we would have done. A lot of people would say, well, you know, Allah will forgive. Here is Yusuf alayhi salam saying that I know, O oh Allah, if it's not for your mercy and the strength that you're going to give me, I might incline towards what they're calling me towards. Subhanallah. Listen to the dua. He says, now I'm translating it. O oh my Rabb, the prison that I've been warned against is more beloved to me than that which they are calling me towards. And if you do not turn away their plan and plot against me, perhaps they may put it on me and I will be from among the losers. You know, I may end up doing something that I don't want to do and I will be a loser. So, oh Allah, I'm asking you two things. Firstly, I'm telling you that I would love to be imprisoned than to disobey you. Secondly, I want you to turn their plot away in such a way that they don't impact on me because if they do, I'm going to be a loser. I'm going to be the loser. That's what he told Allah. Subhanallah. He is literally asking Allah to be jailed. That's what he's saying. Subhanallah. Asijnu habbu ilayh. Ultimately, I don't want to be jailed. I'd like to see the justice happening. But because there's no justice in the system and the false charges are coming across, I'd rather be falsely charged for something than to perpetrate a crime against you, O oh Allah. Do something totally wrong. So sometimes we're faced with a scenario where uh, we're, going, we're, we're made to choose between the disobedience of Allah and getting a false accusation against you, perhaps being jailed, being accused of something you didn't do. Here's Yusuf alayhi salam saying, there's no even question. You have to uh, protect yourself from disobeying Allah because we don't know how you're going to get out of that. But this one here, what will they do? They'll jail you? Let them jail you. How long are they going to jail you for? If they're going to jail you, they've jailed people better than you. So that's why when we look at the prisons and we see people in the prisons, not every time is a justice system competent enough. Not every time are those in prison actually guilty. Sometimes you find people coming out uh, and you know, the, uh, they are found uh, to, to be innocent after years of having spent time in the prisons. It happens. When, when it's revisited and they come out innocent, people look like fools. I've seen it happening in so many countries. I'm sure we've read pieces in the news. So my brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to know this dua of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah says, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ فَصَرَفَ عَنْهُ كَيْدَهُنْ Allah responded his call and turned away their plot from them. As a result, he went into the jail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us the ability to call out to Him. We need to know how to call out to Allah, what to ask Him. And may Allah bless us all. I'm looking forward to seeing you for the next episode, inshaAllah. Until then, aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.